Welcome everyone to this exciting interview segment. Today we have the pleasure of sitting down with Paul Campbell, star of the Hallmark Mystery Movie, The Cases of Mystery Lane that is listening. Paul takes on the role of Alden Case. Join us as we delve into Paul's insights into his character and the challenges of filming this movie. Thank you for being here, Paul. Thank you for having me. I'm always happy to talk about Cases of Mystery Lane. It's one of my favorite projects that I've ever done. I love it. Amazing. So, what drew you to the role of Alden Case in the case of Mystery Lane that is listening? And what aspects of the character or story resonate with you the most? Well, first of all, I love the writing. The writers, uh, Joel and Margot, a married couple, are so wonderful at writing really quirky, but really human characters. They understand relationship and the hardship and the humor that arises from a re relationship. And at the core of these movies, you want a really strong relationship. Uh, but the character was so unique and the humor was so unique it it was very similar in tone to the type of humor that I like to write and the sense of humor that I have. So I immediately understood what they were doing in terms of character, but the mystery was already, was clever as well. You know, they write these clever, fun mysteries and it felt like they had built a world that would allow me as an actor to be as fun and silly as I could possibly be. And that's, not always the case at Hallmark. You know, you don't always get the opportunity to really step outside the box. And uh, and this was that opportunity. So I couldn't wait to jump into it. Amazing. So Alden and Birdie's dynamic in the movie is quite intriguing. How did you and Amy Garcia work to develop the chemistry? And especially since their relationship almost led to divorce? Yeah, I think that's a great question. You know, we're, um, I, I, I've, I've done a lot of thinking about what chemistry is over the years. And I think chemistry is when you're fully present in the other person. And if you're, if you're thinking about yourself and if you're in your own head and you're concerned about how you look or what you're saying or what you're thinking, you can't have chemistry with somebody. Chemistry is when you give yourself over in a moment and you put all of your attention on that person and they put all their attention on you. Then chemistry is two people that are really listening and really reacting and particularly playing a married couple where they've, they're not meeting for the first time. They're not exploring each other. They understand each other very intimately and have known each other for a long time. It's really important that you feel that familiarity and uh and amy's a really great actor you know she's she's done more television than i have uh she's she's been acting as long if not longer and she knows how to do her job really well and, and both of us are really prepared and committed to just being present in a scene and listening to one another and i think you see chemistry blossom out of that um in terms of the relationship I'll give Amy a lot of credit for the way that she shaped the relationship overall because Alden is really a free spirit. He kind of does his own thing. He's challenging at times because he's not always making the best choices. And, you know, he's kind of a frustrating character. And for Amy, whose character is really type A and organized, it would have been really easy every time Alden says something silly or stupid or steps out of line or does something that any other person would go, oh, my gosh, that guy's a lunatic. Amy chose to love him for those moments in not in spite of those moments. And rather than going, oh, Alden and like rolling her eyes at every little thing, she chose to love him for those things and said, you know, the reason that we ended up together is because she celebrates his quirkiness and has grace for all of his missteps. And I think that's a really, really smart choice as an actor. Um, not that it wasn't necessarily in the script written that way, but that's a really strong actor choice. And it gives you the freedom to never have to apologize to your wife, Alden never has to apologize to Birdie, really, 
for just being himself. He can be himself. She can be herself and they love each other for it. And I think that, um, that built the foundation of like a, a really strong, compelling relationship. Amazing. The movie blends mystery with moments of humor and the relationship building. How did you approach balancing the light-hearted moments with the tension of a true crime story? Mm, that's a great question. I think, you know, the again, it's a testament to how good the writing is. And um, the best comedy always comes out of the darkest moments for me. You know, the it's it's a tale as old as time. It's like the the sort of sad clown. You know, the funniest people are often the ones that feel the deepest or have been hurt the deepest. And you know, Bertie and Alden are struggling in their relationship. And if you, the only way that they can get through that is through being silly and having fun. And even with the murders, you know, I mean, I think we all know like life is complicated and sometimes you laugh at a funeral and sometimes you cry at a happy movie. Like there can be sorrow and joy and fear and uh, jubilation can all sort of coexist, you know? So it's not a stretch to also be able to have fun while you're doing something really serious and to be silly and lose yourself in moments when something heinous is going on. Uh, and, and I would give full credit to our writers for, for building such a beautiful balance in this. I think one of the things that drew me to this was how beautifully balanced the story was. You get to be funny and silly and have lots of big laughs. And then you have some really heartfelt serious emotional moments and and i think that's a true reflection of life that's just how we live yeah so true crime podcasts play a central role in the story are you personally a fan of true crime or podcast did you draw uh, from any real life inspiration for alden's character No, I mean, I'm a fan. I like true crime. Uh, I like to watch a lot of the true crime documentaries. I I've listened to a couple of the podcasts. Um, there was a couple really famous ones and I can't even remember what they were called. There was a couple really famous ones about five or six years ago. Uh, when, when true crime podcasting really started to take off and I listened to a few of those. Um, in terms of drawing inspiration, No, I think the the fun for me, and as with most comedy, is you take somebody that's ill-equipped for the journey ahead and you put them in a world where they're constantly uncomfortable and constantly out of their depth. And with Alden, he really has no business being a detective, right? He's gone to a community college and he's taken a class, but he's not a trained detective. And so the fun is the fewer actual detective skills that I can take into any situation, the more fun I can have, because then there's no rules to what I should be doing. Um, I just go in, Alden goes in and he's himself and he kind of bumbles his way through it. And then in the end, he, he and Bertie solved the crime. Um, so for me, the less information going in, the better. <laughs> Great. So officer Tom Newton, brings a unique dynamic to the team. How was it working with Matt Hamilton in shaping the character's reluctant alliance with Birdie and Allen? Oh, Matt Hamilton's great. We, we worked together so many times and uh, he's hilarious and he brings in a whole other dynamic. He creates this foil for both Amy and myself and he's he brings an energy You know, now that Amy is on board, that Birdie's on board with Alden, they're really working together as a team instead of like butting heads. Now they're working in the same direction. So your conflict kind of goes away. And what Matt does is bring in a whole new uh, world of conflict because you're constantly opposed to opposing forces. And that's how you build comedy. I think he added a really fun dynamic to this film he had a smaller um part in the first one but really really fun dynamic in the second one and just adds a whole other element that we can play off and and have fun with 
great. Birdie and Alan seem uh, to get involved uh, in the case uh, due to, uh, to their unique knowledge of uh, nerd speak. <laughs> How did you approach Alan's intelligence and his ability to contribute uh, to solving the case uh, in unconventional ways? Well, I mean, let's be honest, Alden's a nerd, you know, and uh, I think I'm a bit of a nerd. I have, I certainly have a nerdy side to me. I do connect with people on a kind of a nerdy intellectual level. And I think that, and, and Alden does as well. Like I, um, you know, the writers do such a good job of writing really specifically for these characters and, uh, both Amy and I had so much fun in those scenes connecting with the uh, the people we were interrogating and the suspects. And, you know, I mean, Amy get, got to be, it, it was, it was a little bit unfortunate because the, um, what we actually filmed in the script was much more, there was much more to those interrogations. And, you know, Amy was really coming to life as a character and, and we were really getting much more into it. Um, but obviously, you know, you can't keep everything uh, because it just, it's just too long. I think they ended up having to cut 20 minutes out of that movie. So there's 20 minutes of unseen movie that never made it into that cut. Um, but yeah, like, again, it's sort of a, you know, Alden is goofy and he's a big feeler, but he's also a nerd at the end of the day. And so that was an opportunity to let that side of him shine a little bit brighter. Amazing. The movie is both a, a mystery and a character study of a couple trying to rekindle their relationship. How does the theme of uh, uh, relationship building through shared interests speak to the story's core message? Well, I mean, I think it, the, the challenge that we're working with in this film is that most of the, in fact, I think all of the mystery series that that certainly that has Hallmark, that Hallmark Channel has, they're almost always two people that are meeting each other for the first time and then end up working quite often events that develops over four or five or six episodes. And romance and the love story is is the heart of Hallmark. You know, they are they tell love stories. When you have a married couple from the start, you don't have the benefit of telling the will they, won't they get together, a slowly developing romance. You have to find other ways to tell stories about love. And what a great opportunity to showcase, you know, what it's like to be in a married couple and to actually struggle. And we're looking at love from a different lens in this one. And we pulled back a little bit in the second film on the on the marriage theme and on the um you know the issues that they're dealing with we, we they've kind of dialed it down a little bit i think if we move further with the series that will end up coming back and playing in a little bit more predominantly because it does add a really nice element but i think this is for us this feels like telling a love story from a different perspective and from a, a very widely relatable perspective. A lot of people are married and are going like, yeah, it's great to watch people meet and fall in love, but like, let's tell stories about people that are, that have been in the trenches with each other for 10 years. What's that like? And, uh, and so that's kind of what we're doing. It's really, it, it feels unique to Hallmark and uh, it's, it's fun to be exploring that. That's amazing. So you have been a staple in Hallmark production, starring films like Falling Together and Three Wiser Men and the Boy. What keeps bringing you back home to Hallmark and how do you feel your roles that have involved over the years? That's a great question. Um, I, love, I love my job. I love the people I work with. I love the people I work for. You know, I love the types of stories we tell. I love the creative freedom that I have. I love that I'm able to work as both a writer and as an actor. And, um, you know, it's so rare in the industry that you have uh, like, a, it's sort of like an old world, you know, it's a company where like a, there's a family 
element to this. Like if we had company contracts back in the days of, you know, when Warner Brothers would do that or Paramount and they would have these contract actors that would sort of become a family and, and work consistently. That doesn't exist anymore in the entertainment industry in North America outside of Hallmark Channel. And it feels really special to work for this company. Um, I don't I don't know where else I would be able to do the things that I do for Hallmark Channel. And in terms of, you know, roles evolving, I think I've been working for Hallmark for 10 years and uh, I've certainly matured in those 10 years. And yeah, I think you sort of grow into different channels. You grow a little bit more as like a grounded leading man. Sometimes I'm playing a father, you know, um, sometimes I'm a little quirkier. When I first started, I was in my early thirties and those are different roles. You know, someone who's in their early thirties doesn't have that same life experience. So I'm not getting those same roles that I got when I was in my early thirties. Now I'm getting more mature, grounded, leading man. Maybe, maybe this guy owns a house now. And the guys 10 years ago, they didn't own it. They had a decent car, but they didn't own a house. Now I own a house, you know, maybe I own a business. Maybe I have a child. Uh, they're all sort of similar characters, but there's new shades to these. There's, it, it feels like the opportunities are greater for me now than they were even 10 years ago. Yeah. And the Hormark films often focus on themes of love, family, and their redemption. What draws you to these themes and how do you keep your performances fresh in these familiar storylines? Well, what draws me to these themes is that there, you know, I have an eight year old child and I think there's so much content um, that we have access to that is not appropriate for children. And it's really nice to be able to create content that I can be proud to show my son and that I can feel comfortable having my, my son watch and that I can share with my mom, you know, who's my biggest fan. And, um, And I think these are really important themes, especially in really challenging times, economically and socially and politically, where it's really challenging time um, in North America, certainly. And uh, but I think globally, you know, and there's war and there's uh, there's, just, uh, you know, th there's so many you turn on the news and it's really hard to watch the news. And I think Hallmark Channel provides an outlet for people to escape from that. And I think that's really nice. I think it's really important. And the more conventions that we go to, the more fans that we meet, the more and more you realize how impactful it is to tell stories that have hope and that tell stories of love and that deal with, um, you know, messages of positivity. And it feels really good to be part of that. Uh, in terms of keeping performances fresh, you know, it's every, every script is different. Every actor, every co-star, every, everybody is different. They'd be like saying, well, you know, you made, you've made cookies for the last 10 years. Sure. But these ones have maple syrup and this, the X, Y, Z. The last ones had chocolate chips and raisins and oatmeal. And they're like, well, they're not, that's not the same cookie at all. It feels like you're doing something brand new every time because there's so many variables to it. Um, and so for me, it's just playtime. I just, I like to show up to work and I like to see what tools we have to play with. What is the set? What are the actors? What are the words? And, and then you just build something. You don't try to make it different. You just go, these are the tools. Great. Let's start playing. And, you know, something invariably comes out different every time. Amazing. So with the, the shift towards more inclusive storytelling at the Hallmark, how did you see the future of these films evolving? And how does that impact the kinds of roles you want to take on? Well, I think you know, obviously diversity and inclusiveness is extremely important. And I'm so grateful that Hallmark is heading so strongly uh, in that direction and has been embracing it for years and years. I think it's, um, you know, 
I love to be part of movies uh, that celebrate diversity and inclusion. And I love to write that stuff into the scripts that I work on. I think it's incredibly important. I think we're evolving as a society. And I think continuing to tell stories that include people from all walks of life uh, and, you know, I think is the way we should be going and the harder we push and the more that we're able to sort of welcome everyone with open arms, the more we can sort of spread a message of peace and of love and acceptance. And I, I think, you know, change and evolution takes a long time. And when you're asking people to accept something new, um, that can be a long, challenging battle, but you have to fight it. And it's just one inch at a time. And the more that we can sort of bring awareness and, and celebrate and, you know, uh, I think the more that we can sort of move toward a really positive place. Great. And looking ahead, are there any genres or roles you haven't explored yet that you are eager to dive into? What's next for you in terms of projects or personal goals? I would like to do something really romantic. Like, you know, I, I was just talking with some friends the other day. Uh, I was talking with Ben Ayers. You know, Ben Ayers, the actor, Benjamin Ayers, who does a lot of stuff for Homework Channel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did this to my lip. Uh, he hit me with a cell phone on my lip. This is much better than it was four or five days ago. It looked really bad. But um, anyway... I, Uh, after he hit me in the face with the cell phone, uh, I was chatting with him about this. And I said, you know, I, I, I always seem to often play sort of the goofy character, you know, I'm fun and, and kind of silly and, and I can make people laugh, but, um, I'd really like to do something like really romantic, you know, something really sort of maybe a little more dramatic and, and grounded and, uh, And just try out that side, like tell a real love story. You know, I, I think it's been quite a while since I told like a real deep romantic love story. And so I've, my brain is kind of working in that direction. How do I, how do I develop something like that? And, and uh, that's kind of where I'd like to go. Amazing. So a little change of subject though. What have been some of the most memorable projects you have worked on throughout your career and why for you? Great question. Uh, well, I could sort of walk that backward. I think uh, Three Wise Men and a Baby, the, the first one that we did, certainly stands out because I was working with my best friends and, you know, like just pure joy and being able to have, have worked on it as a writer and as an actor and create something that was received so well was uh, just an incredible, incredible gift. And, um, you know, I, if I want to jump back in my career, like way back, uh, you know, I started on a show called Battlestar Galactica, like right out of the gate, pretty early on in my career, very memorable. Um, I've, I had an opportunity to work with some really, really phenomenal actors. Uh, I did a movie with Andy Griffith right before he passed away, um, who is, you know, a legend. I, I worked with Steve Martin. I played Steve Martin's son on a movie. I got to work with Al Pacino early in my career and I did one scene with him. Um, and then when I, I, I did a, some, series I've had a really great interesting career that I'm really grateful for but you know the last 10 years my first movie with Hallmark Channel was Window Wonderland and that just changed the course of my career entirely and I'm so grateful this little movie that turned you know People loved it and and I haven't looked back. I've had, I don't even know how many movies at Hallmark, 13 or 14 movies or something like that that I've done for them and written six uh, with my co-writer, Kimberly Susted. Uh, you know, we've done three movies together. All of them have been wonderful. And I just, yeah, I look back and I, I feel like I've had a really blessed career. Like it's just been a series of highlights. 
Amazing. A quick question. At mm. Survivor the Shows, we are big fans of Christmas rom-coms. What is your all-time favorite? Christmas Vacation. <laughs> National <laughs> Lampoon's Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase. Uh, it's the best. It's my favorite. I watch it every year. Great. The last question. Can you tease something about your next projects? Well, the next project coming out is Three Wiser Men and a Boy. And that's coming out on November 23rd, I believe. Yeah. It's really good. It's really good. It took a whole extra year to get made because uh, it was very challenging. But I'm so excited for people to see it. I think people are going to be really, really, really pleased. Um, I'm really proud of it. And uh, and I'm honestly, I, you know, the boys are really proud of it. I think I think audiences are going to be very, very happy. Um, I've got a couple other things that I'm working on, starting to work on as a writer that I can't talk about yet. But uh, those things will be coming in 2025. And uh, and I'm hoping for a third installment of Cases of Mystery Lane. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. So this is it. Make uh, all of uh, sure to put up uh, the movie, The Cases of Mystery Lane, that is listening. And all the other projects uh, Paul is uh, attached to on our platform. And thank you, Paul, to join us today. So thank you for having me. It's been lovely chatting with you. Really nice questions. Thank you. And thank you for the time. And thank okay. you all for watching. Bye. Bye, everybody.